Yo, welcome back to uh, Hot Tip Tuesday. I'm gonna do it a little bit different this way tonight than I do sometimes. And in this video, I wanna share with you how I keep from spending all my money. And this could apply to you in, you know, depending on where you are. If you are like at the beginning of the sharpening journey, this is, you know, a, a thing to have in mind uh, when you're looking at tooling up. And there's a lot of ways to spend money on tools. And then the other uh, angle to look at this through. Uh, see, I said angles. Uh, Jim O'Donnell catches me on that all the time. <clears throat> the sharpening puns. Uh, but anyway, it is if you have a sharpening business and you're making money and you're seeing results and you just want to keep seeing more results, um, it can be, again, easy to want to buy more tools. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five things that I do or but some are action items, some are mental philosophies on how I kind of manage money and how I keep myself from spending it all because I want to. Um, so the first thing, the number one, is that I have a wish list. And when I decide that I want something, I put it on my wish list. And it's a Word document. And I just, I write it down there. And it could be something simple like a new leather belt for my 1x30. Um uh, that might be a little, I might just buy that one actually. Um, but still, like, I hope we're getting to the point, like it doesn't have to be too small, but it can, it is definitely the big stuff. If I'm looking at drop in most, I've kind of, are, I've exhausted most of the hundred dollar tools, like tools measured in the hundreds. And now the tools I'm looking at are measured in thousands. So those always go on the wish list and it gives me time. Uh, it, it definitely prevents the impulse buy, which I think we a lot of times are, uh, we probably are all guilty of that at time. And sometimes we're okay with it. And sometimes we feel regret about it. But anyway, uh, putting it on the wish list and coming back to it over time, you know, you not just write it down there, but, you know, put down what the cost is, put it, you know, include the link to it, uh, maybe even include some text around like why you want it or like why you're not just buying it. Um, uh, I think we'll get to another one here in a little bit to expand upon that. But anyway, the point there is uh, a wish list. And what you will find if you do this, like I have, sometimes you come back to your wish list and you forgot that you put something on there. And that's a good indicator that the wish list is working and it's keeping you from, uh, from spending money in, in moments of not full clarity. All right, so that's, uh, it also, the other thing, uh, I'm looking at some notes over here too. The other thing I do on the wish list is I rank it. So sometimes uh, something that gets on the on the wish list will, will go down in rank, right? And it's not prioritized. Um, and sometimes things come up on the wish list as well. Which moves to the second thing is like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really opposed to taking on debt. I realize that, um, so I will default to not taking on debt. And people that I work with, I encourage people, don't take on debt. If you want to take on debt, there is a way to get my endorsement and my support of that. And that's for like other people and for myself as well. And that is probably mostly math, uh, math and logic. So like if you want to buy an expensive tool or if I want to buy an expensive tool, I need to understand what that tool is going to return to me <clears throat> in, you know, with reasonable expectations and uh, understand like the time commitment for that and uh, the ROI, the return on the investment, right? So I need to understand that. And that's how like for both myself and other people, if, if somebody brings me a case and says, I'm going to take out $2,000 and uh, it's going to be for this tool, it's going to generate this much money. I have leads and uh, people already asking that would cover like you know, you know, 10 or 25% of the cost. Um, and I'm optimistic that I, right? Like, okay, like that's a plan. I dig that. That's, uh, and then you understand your debt. You understand how much you're paying in interest. You've looked at all the other options. Um, so anyway, the point I'm getting to here at number, <laughs> number two, finally, on how I don't spend all my money is I, I defer to not taking out debt and if I am going to take out debt, I will have half saved before I do. So I have to I have to pay half of it with money that I've saved, and I would tolerate taking out debt on the other on the other half. So, um, 
Yeah, the I have my note here is that I, the best case is that you save all the money. You don't take out debt um, and you pay for it all outright, uh, which is very possible in the sharpening scenario where all of my tools, uh, you know, I, I say often the, the my whole shop, my whole business is built on the back of the edge, bro. And I've uh, I don't I'm thinking now, like, did I have I ever taken out debt to buy a tool? Um, like I might've put it on my credit card, but then paid it off before the bill cleared. So maybe I haven't used debt to grow my shop. Um, which means that my tools have all paid for my other tools. Uh, that doesn't mean I wouldn't consider, especially when I'm getting into these multi-thousand dollar tools that I'm considering. Um, maybe I would justify being halfway there. I have a business that's making money consistently for years now. Right. So like, uh, I could tolerate that. But anyway, point there being is uh, don't take out debt. Number and then if you do need to take out debt, at least put half of it down. Be ready to spend half of it. Okay, number three on how I don't spend all my money is Bitcoin, and this is one of those rabbit holes that I ran down in uh, 2021. Right now it's March of 2022. I spent the better part of last year really engaged in Bitcoin. <clears throat> So the, the where this comes into play is whatever I'm spending my money on has to give me uh, more hope than what I believe to be in Bitcoin. And I'm in the I have come to the not conclusion, but the the idea that I think that whether you know it's not inconceivable that in my lifetime Bitcoin will reach a valuation of a million dollars um, or more. So um, if I'm going to spend my money on something, it needs to give me as much hope as that. Otherwise, I should be buying Bitcoin with it. Um, so that's, that, is a, that is a cool, um, a cool way to think. If you have not explored Bitcoin, and I mean like explored it, not less like read headlines, but like really kind of understood it, understood the whole monetary system, both the fiat one, the one that we've been born and raised into, and then the differences between the inflationary and the deflationary currency, uh, the house of cards that is the fiat system. Like if, if, um, if you haven't studied that, I would invite you to consider it. Uh, I have learned more about my, the monetary system I've used my whole life by studying Bitcoin. Uh, and in so doing, it has opened up my awareness of the potential that lies in a deflationary currency. So there's that. Um, the, the Moving on from Bitcoin, which is a deep rabbit hole, uh, but it's an awesome one. Number four is the rainy day fund. And uh, this is something that has been with me my whole life. So it's not a new concept, but I wanted to make sure that I share it because not everybody has a rainy day fund. And there's a specific caveat with the business as well. But if, if you don't have some money sacked away that would uh, help you get through an emergency, then it's, it, that, that should be a highest priority, um, both for like just realistic living and then also for um, your own stress levels, right? Uh, it's nice to feel comfortable in that way. Um, the, the other thing is that I, from, from the business angle, I self-insure, meaning I don't have business insurance. And I, so that way I tolerate the risk. Uh, there are some, some special circumstances when you get into a sharpening business where this would be different, such as like doing events or, or um, farmer's markets or, or places where you go where they require that you carry business insurance. Uh, for me, I do not. And that means that if I damage or... Uh, destroy a piece of equipment that I'm working on, then I need to be ready to replace it. And the, what's cool about this business is that I, you know, the things that I work on, like the high value ones are, are measured in hundreds of dollars, right? Um, so that's, that's a tolerable risk analysis that I have, I have come to at this point. I might change based on how my business evolves over time. Uh, but the rainy day fund, like I, I, I keep, I keep uh, a business cash reserved. Uh, one reason because I self-insure. Second reason is because um, my belief, my understanding is that it's uh, a smart business practice to do that. Uh, so that was number four, like having reserve funds, the rainy day fund, but also the self-insurance. 
Uh, and reason number five is know thy personal capital. So this is um, this what this is. Uh, personal capital is like determining your net worth. And for there's there's like services you can use for that, like personal capital. I don't. I just use an Excel Excel spreadsheet, and I revisit it hopefully monthly. Sometimes it goes a couple months before I go back into it. But in that, I have outlined what my objectives are. Uh, as far as like where, how I want my wealth distributed, my personal capital, my personal wealth distributed. And that spreadsheet helps keep me focused on a uh, longer term. And I'm the type of person who doesn't invest for retirement. I invest for seven generations. And I would, I would really like to set my future family up for success, uh, which means I need to have capital reserved. So uh, if if I'm ever like on the fence uh, about making a big expenditure, I can go look at that personal capital spreadsheet and make a decision with that included as to whether or not a big ins- expense helps me move helps me move myself toward my true objectives. Okay, so that's it. That's number five. It was having a having a rich wish list, not taking out de- debt, or at least having half of it reserved before you spend money, or saved. I'm sorry. Uh, having whatever thing you're going to uh, tr- purchase, have more hope in it than Bitcoin. Have uh, reserve funds of uh, both for the business, for uh, self insurance, and for uh, rainy days or the emergencies. And then uh, uh, awareness of the personal capital so that it can keep you true to your own objectives. And that's it. I hope you find that helpful both in your sharpening, your business, and your life journeys. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next week for the next Hot Tip Tuesday.